for the presentation on assessment of aerodynamics of the NACA 64A212 aerofoil on the, on the context of computational fluid dynamics. This is a very interesting topic that we studied a long time back and um, very demanding and at the same time with the present day computational abilities, computer uh, abilities, these have become uh, more challenging and more interesting. The two presenters are Mr. RMPS Bandara, who is a graduate of University of Moratua in Mechanical Engineering in 1998, and uh, he has obtained his master's degree also from the same university in 2005 in Energy Technology, and he is currently a lecturer at the Kotalaura Defence University. The other presenter is uh, Squadron Leader Jeevani Abegunavadana, who is a graduate of uh, Kotalaura Defence Academy in 1998, uh, with first class in bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering, and she has a master's degree from USA, and she is a member of the Institute of Aerodynamics and Aeronautics, USA. So may I straight away invite uh, the two presenters, and just a little, we are concerned about the timing for presentations. I think you know the rules. Uh, we have 10 minutes for the presentation. We will have the green light for eight minutes, and at the eighth minute, the red light will also come, both green and red, and after the 10th minute, you will have the red light. May I invite Mr. Bandara and Scotland leader, uh, Jeevani. Ladies and gentlemen, you are uh, the time, no? I'm here. To, uh, we are here to make the presentation on the assessment of aerodynamics of the NACA 64A212 aerofoil on the context of computational fluid dynamics. This is jointly done by me and Bandara, and also from uh, with uh, Scotland leader Jeevani Abegunawadana. She is uh, she represents Department of Aeronautical Engineering of KDU. I have uh, organized my presentation according to these topics. First, I will give you an overview of the research study, then the research objectives, governing principles will be explained, then the methodology and approach that we have adopted during this particular study, and the results and the interpretation of results, and finally, the conclusion. Let me elaborate on the overview. As you know, if you take the performance of an aircraft, it mainly depends on the wing of the aircraft as well as on the body of the aircraft. The, and if you take the aerodynamic performance, basically, it, it uh, depends on, basically, on the aerofoil of the wing. So we need to understand the, uh, the aerodynamic and performance characteristics in order to explain and understand uh, the performance of an aircraft, especially when it comes to train aircrafts. Uh, this is very important uh, uh, in the perspective of the student and the trainer. But unfortunately, in certain uh, aerofoils, especially uh, with respect to tra train aircrafts, certain characteristics are not readily available. For instance, NACA 64A212, the aerofoil that we are focusing on during this study, uh, does not have such data available because the manufacturers have not revealed them to the general public. So because of that, there is an issue as to uh, that we are not in a position to understand fully the performance of such aircrafts with the particular uh, air airfoil in. So how can we uh, address this issue? As you know, in, e in engineering, in order to generate a solution, we have three methodologies analytical methodology, numerical, and also experimental. If you take analytical solutions, it basically covers the, uh, the consideration of uh, first principles, and we try to uh, uh, generate an analytical solution. But in this case, uh, because of the complexity of flow physics and turbulence involved, it's not possible for us to generate a complete solution for our problem. And also there is the experimental methodology, but for that, the cost involved is very high, and the resources involved is 
actually not uh, available in the country. So, because we need sophisticated equipment like wind tunnels and so on. So, those facilities are not uh, actually very rarely available nowadays uh, in, in, in the country. So, because of that, uh, we, have, uh, we, ha we have used uh, the numerical approach and one of the methodologies that we can adopt in this case is the computational fluid dynamics or CFD methodology. And CFD uh, methodology includes many tools which are very well validated and can serve our purpose. So on this context, we have used CFD methodology, computational fluid dynamics methodology, in, in assessing the aerodynamic performance of NACA 64A212 aerofoil. So the research objectives will include modeling the aerodynamic behavior of the NACA 64A212 aerofoil using CFD methodology and tools, and then to develop a generic lift curve and drag, drag polar to represent flows of reasonable Reynolds number that it would experience during its actual flight. So based on this, we will be able to generate uh, the different performance characteristics which, is, uh, which can be applied for uh, assessment of the performance of the, this particular aerofoil. The governing principles, the equations are complex because we are using Navier-Stokes equations in three-dimensional unsteady form. We will be using continuity, x-momentum, y-momentum, and z-momentum equations. Uh, in the CFD tool, all these partial differential equations are solved by, uh, by converting them to linear equations. So actually, we don't have to do anything manual. The tools will uh, take care of the discretization process, but still, uh, this is the concept that we are using in the CFD methodology. An energy equation will also be used for generating the energy levels encountered during this process. And basically, uh, in the aerofoil, uh, the performance is expressed in terms of the local pressure and shear stress because mainly we have uh, the local pressure and viscous pressure or viscous forces coming into effect. So uh, if you take uh, P and tau uh, as the local pressure and shear stress, then we can calculate the resultant aerodynamic force R using this equation. So this will be inbuilt in the tools and we can make use of the computational tools to solve these equations. And as you know, in, a, in an airfoil, there are three different parameters that we are interested in, that is the lift force, drag force, and the moment. But instead of taking into consideration the, the force, we are taking into account the coefficients, the lift coefficients, drag coefficient, and the moment coefficient. So uh, these are represented by these equations, and we are trying to assess the aerodynamic performance through these parameters. So these parameters are direct representations of angle of attack and also number and Mach number because the aerodynamic performance always depend on the angle of attack, Reynolds number and the Mach number. Then the methodology that we have adopted, actually we are using several tools in this case. Gambit is our solid modeling tool that we have used in creating the geometry, the solid geometry of the airfoil and we have to incorporate the boundary conditions and the physical geometry and then you can generate a mesh. Mesh is a subdomain of the aerofoil that we are using to solve all the transport equations involved. Then once you develop the computational model, you can export it as a mesh file to the main simulation engine, Fluent, which is a well-validated CFT, commercial CFT tool that is currently in use in the world. We have to incorporate boundary conditions, flow properties, and the turbulence models. Of course, the selection of turbulence model is difficult because there are so many turbulence models. Cape Silen is one, and Sparat Almaras is another one. But we have gone for Sparat Almaras because it is mainly used in aerodynamic applications. So we have used that one, and you run your simulation until you get a converged solution. Converged solution is the numerical solution that we will be generating. 
And if you are not satisfied with the results or if there are any, uh, let's say, disturbances or if, there's, if the solution does not uh, agree or it does not uh, uh, generate realistic results, you have to go back to the computational model and you have to look at where you have gone wrong. So it's an iterative process and you have to continue until you get a realistic converged solution. And this is the computational mesh that we have developed. You can see the airfoil shape and, and this area, which is very close to the airfoil, you have a very coarse mesh because they are the area where drastic changes are going to take place. So we have a very coarse, a very fine mesh here. And, but this area, which is far away from the airfoil, we have a coarse mesh because the changes are not that radical. So we, we are, because we have to have this computational mesh so that we have a compromise between the computational time and the cost. And also it depends on the computational resources that we possess. So there should be some compromise in making decisions on the parameters. And once that is developed, all these node points will play a major role because all transport Navier-Stokes equations will be solved in each of these node points in an iterative process. And once that is done, we can export the mesh file with all the boundary conditions, turbulence models, and other all related models. And it will be run on the main simulation engine that is Fluent. And these are the iteration curves that you can see once the iteration, iterations are carried out. So you can see the errors have gone down significantly and you have a converged solution because now the errors have become constant and the errors are also very low. So we have done this for uh, for number of cases uh, that are applicable to the, this particular error file. So from this slide onwards, uh, my friend Scott Nalija Abhikun Adhani will uh, do the presentation. Thank you. So in this graph, you can see the, uh, the results that we have generated. This is the lift coefficient versus Mach number. And as you can see, uh, in the subsonic region, with the increase in dynamic pressure, the lift coefficient is increasing. And again, in the supersonic region also, the lift continues to rise. But however, you see that there is a certain drop of lift or loss of lift around the transonic region, mainly around, say, like 0.85 Mach. This is mainly due to the drag divergence effect, which is a very prominent transonic uh, effect, and also uh, shock wave and boundary layer interactions. This is the drag coefficient versus Mach number. Again, in the subsonic region, the drag continues to rise with dynamic pressure, and again, in the supersonic region, you see a gradual increment, almost two folds as in the subsonic region. But you see this very drastic increase in the drag that is around 0.85 mark again, which is for this particular aerofoil, the drag divergence mark number. This is the moment coefficient versus mark number curve, which quantitatively resembles a lift curve. And again, you can see in the transonic region, you see the unstable effects of drag divergence. This graph shows the static pressure profile for the particular aerofoil. And uh, please note that this aerofoil was uh, modeled in a two-dimensional context, and also it is an uh, infinite aerofoil, so you don't have any cross-flow effects. Uh, and you can clearly see the stagnation areas in the front leading edge of the aerofoil, and also in the back, there's a lower uh, velocity, the free stream velocities have been reached. Uh, what is important is that you can see very clearly uh, the incipient shock waves have formed on the top and bottom surfaces of the aerofoil. So you see a drastic change in the local velocity. This is the velocity magnitude profile, uh, again corresponding with the previous static pressure uh, contours, where it again shows the shock waves on the top and bottom surfaces of the aerofoil. And also you can see the boundary layer uh, especially adjacent to the aerofoil surfaces where you can see uh, the viscous effects are very prominent, so it is a very low 
velocity region which is attached uh, to the surface of the aerofoil. Uh, this is the velocity vector uh, vectors in the trailing edge particularly where you can see that uh, uh, the fluid elements have not been retarded only due to the frictional effects. They have been retarded but it also has to flow against adverse pressure gradient. So the flow is further retarded such that it has no energy whatsoever to go on in the same direction and therefore the flow has reversed. And this uh, reverse flow has caused a wake of turbulence uh, in the downstream of the aerofoil. And you can also see from this how the uh, velocity vectors have started to change its direction and you can see uh, recirculation has occurred. So the important, importance here is that once the recirculation has started, the effective area which produces the lift on the aerofoil has been destroyed. So again, this corresponds to the drag divergence effects that we have yeah. experienced in the transonic region. We'll give another, yeah, another this is the final then. output of our research, the drag polar, uh, 4.6 to 1.2 mark, and it, is, uh, it gives essential data for aircraft or airfoil performance analysis. If you draw a tangent line uh, from the origin to the drag polar, it gives the point of uh, lift to drag ratio a maximum. So that is the point where you will get the maximum aerodynamic efficiency, and also the corresponding angle of attack is the angle of attack at which the aircraft must fly at maximum aerodynamic, uh, aerodynamic efficiency. And also you can see that the uh, minimum coefficient of drag has been translated to the right with the increasing Mach number. This is again due to the uh, drag divergence effects in the transonic region. And again what you see here is at 0.85 you can see the shockwave interactions and all those unstable effects have caused a very unstable drag polar. So in this research, we have done a preliminary performance analysis of this NACA uh, 64A212 uh, aerofoil, which is very com common for jet aircraft. And we were able to generate most in, uh, important uh, aerodynamic information, which is uh, unavailable, uh, especially uh, to, for a country like ours. And uh, we can see that in the transonic region, we were able to analyze the behavior of the aerofoil in terms of the lift and drag coefficients. Uh, these generated data will serve as a base for the future work which the authors intended to do uh, on the performance analysis, not only on 2D uh, aerofoils, but also of more complex wing body combinations of real aircraft. And also, uh, once we acquire more sophisticated equipment such as wind tunnels, we will be able to enhance this model and uh, with more flow visualization techniques and uh, solid uh, data acquis acquisition systems, we will be able to uh, further improve the work we that we have done and also validate the results that we obtain on an experimental basis. Uh, so that, uh, with that, we have concluded our presentation. Thank you very much.